we are today. This is episode four of God Hockey, and today I've got Spencer Freer from Bauer. He's going to walk through all the hyperlight gear for us today. Spencer, how are you, buddy? I'm good. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, obviously, um, just as we as we run through, I'm going through the Rolodex of who I've got to call and who I've got to uh, set up stuff with. And obviously, your name's right up at the top. Well, I so we are it. pretty excited. We've we've got. We've got Hyperlight coming out. Uh, we've seen it, obviously, uh, this season. Obviously, uh, Vasilevsky, obviously front and center, starting the finals tonight. We're recording this. Uh, we're recording this uh, just before Montreal and Tampa kick it off. So, yeah. Um, what's new with the pad? Obviously, moving from uh, in the vapor line, we're moving into this one. And uh, what can we expect to see that maybe we didn't see previously? Yeah, so biggest change is just bringing a little bit of technology over from Supreme. So we saw in 2020 when we came up with the ultrasonic, we came up with Stabilis Slide. So yeah, our our integrated knee block. So bringing that over the the feedback from pro retail every basically level was that that integrated knee need to be needed to be brought over to Vapor, regardless of that being more flexible. So we brought up uh, we brought over Stabila Flex. So yeah. basically, be coming out with Stabila Slide, just making it a more flexible version of Stabila Slide. That way, it gives the goalie more stability, better overall um, flex in the knee when it uh, with the fully integrated knee itself. So um, that was probably the biggest thing. And then two other things that we upgraded as well was that we upgraded um, to balance plate, so a bigger pillow. On mm-hmm. the calf, on the calf landing itself, and that's just a once again. I'm pro- I'll probably stay st- say stability like 15 times today because yeah. that was the biggest thing that we tried to focus on um, was just creating stability overall in the pad. Is is that goalie needs that in the butterfly or just even moving around in their RVH is a big one. And then lastly, we um, we upgraded the core of the pad to the rebound boost core. So mm-hmm. you'll notice that um, when you pick up a a uh, hyperlight versus a 2x pro there's a little more pre-curved shape so more of an s curve so that was something we tried to focus on but then also it is more flexible so um feedback for a lot of years is that our vapor pad as a flexible pad hasn't been as flexible as other right. brands so that was something that we tried to focus on was to be a little more flexible uh versus our competitor so this well. gives it a little more spring gives it a yeah. little more return up and down you can't have exactly. a, you, you you can't have uh, too many stabilities in your line. So I think exactly. you guys have you can, nailed it. You've you really... can only you can only nail like I think you're capped at two. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's true. <laughs> uh, now, okay, so but Stabila Flex and Stabila Slide. I mean, obviously, it's it's very similar uh, in the way they're constructed, but they're different in the way they're implemented. Uh, I think maybe sometimes we might get lost on even just with the terminology and things like that, because, you know, you've got, you've got two pads that are both flat. So you don't have that. The flat pad is the blocking pad. The bump pad is the, is the mobility pad. So it's good that you have that differentiation, but obviously uh, implementing what works well on one certainly uh, does well to implement another similar version of that on the other. Yeah. And that's why shape was so important too, is that we came out with the new core was just having a more pre-curved shape out of the box. Cause that was something too, is when we were saying that our pads, like our Supreme had one break below the knee and then vapor was a double break. Mm-hmm. Obviously we don't have the external breaks. We only have internal, but right. when they come out of the box, they were coming out pretty straight, both families. So knowing that we wanted to have a more pre-curved S, S shape, that was something we definitely wanted to make sure mm-hmm. we did. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, so far, uh, I mean, everything looks good. You know, I know, um, I mean, throughout the line, I remember, I remember coming out to a, to a, a demo to try the original, um, when, when yeah, Supreme one first yeah, launched yeah. with that. And I remember how much, how much I enjoyed it. And I think it's only gotten better ever since in, in all of the lines and, you know, between the two, I think vapor is almost kind of the one I, I kind of almost settled towards as, as liking, um, now, one thing I did want to I did want to uh, get to uh, early on too uh, today was uh, skates because yeah. we've got uh, obviously um, a bit of a change up. Um, so we're fully into the fit one, fit two, fit three. So we're mixing less into different skates, and we're just 
we're we're concentrating on making a great skate and then we're concentrating on the fit that the goalie needs just like yeah. we did on player side so um can we go into um maybe we can go into each into pro elite and gsx yep uh just to highlight some of the some of the keys on those yeah so the biggest thing for us was just trying to take best of both worlds is mm-hmm. something we focused a lot about right now is consumer insight we, we for a lot of years we were starting to only use our own feedback or internal and all of a sudden it started turning into we're a bunch of beer league goalies giving feedback on product where maybe yeah. it should maybe be coming from the kids and our pro athletes so we've done a, beer, a really big focus on consumer insight and the biggest thing was that goalies didn't really have a skating style is that 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 translation from player into goalie having supreme and vapor just wasn't there it just it, it was confusing the goalie more than anything because it a kid would go into the store he'd buy the new vapor the next year, the new Supreme come out, he'd buy the new Supreme mm-hmm. and he'd be like, Oh, that kind of fits a little, it was with that, that story wasn't translating. So that was the biggest thing is that we've now gone down to one family. Um, as you mentioned, and then the biggest thing for us was just taking the best of both worlds. So we have the stability of Supreme. So you'll notice that all three skates, the pro, the elite, the GSX are stiffer down low. And then we've added in technology to specifically have better flex up top. And then that way the goalie gets the proper range of motion, but also the be- like better pushes than they've gotten in the past when they've had to sacrifice each family. And as you mentioned, the fits, the fits are kind of like the biggest thing is everyone goes, well, yeah. I was always a Supreme then, what would I wear? Yep. So the way it lays out is that fit one, if you loved your vapors, fit one mm-hmm. is a vapor. Mm-hmm. Fit two is your Supreme. So if you said, hey, Spence, I tried the ultrasonic, I love them. That's what, that's what um, a fit two is. Fit three is an all new fit. We've gotten some feedback that goalies jumping out of our competitor skates, all about what, whatever it is, have said that sometimes they lack depth or wrap, that they sit in the eyelets in our skates, that mm-hmm. it just doesn't wrap their foot enough. So fit three was where we focused. And um, th- this has been a big driver for us trying to target get, getting some, maybe some pro guys out of co- some competitor skates and into ours, knowing that we're going to have a better depth and wrap right out of the box. Yeah, obviously important. I mean, it doesn't fit. It's it's really uh, it's really uh, difficult to make the pitch, you know. Well, being honest, we got we got away with it for a couple of years, knowing that we were the first cowlingless goalie skate. Goalies right. just had to have it, so they sacrificed a little bit. That a kid put on a one ass goal skate and was like, "It's okay," but they knew the benefit of the skating, the the pushes, the attack angle, all that went hand in hand. But then all of a sudden, when when it wasn't adding up from a fit perspective that's where we started to slip and then that's where we knew that we needed to dial that in and we got better as it went into 1s 2s pro into 2x pro we got to a good spot but then when we started figuring out that there was still some room to grow then we knew uh, we knew we had to go down to the fit system yeah yeah no, that's perfect i i think uh obviously having already a year worth of um the player skate sort of moving to that model uh, certainly yeah. in the especially in the in the higher tiers um it really does help when you're just trying to explain something to a customer it's like oh well you're not just you're not this skate because of your foot no no you're whatever skate you think works the best for you but you're also the you're, you're just going to end up in the fit that suits you yeah exactly so that, let, 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 that really does a good job of that Exactly. Let's build the skate from the inside out versus outside mm-hmm, in. Mm-hmm. And then it just, you're going to just going to create issues. That's our goal. And also too, a lot of goalies for a lot of years, right? Like skate becomes a secondary conversation with goalies that they're always worried about pad block catch. Sure. So there's not as much attention there that uh, like this sounds silly, but a lot of goalies just kind of always thought goalie skates were meant to be uncomfortable. Like it was just that they're not, <laughs> they're not perfect. They're not as great. <laughs> It just was what it was. And then all you know of a how you goalie start... skates always hurt your feet. Exactly. Um, like, no, oh, you I don't know what you're like, talking about. I, I remember when, when, when I first started at Bauer and I got, and I got a new pair of skates when I, when I got on board and I remember putting them on and I came off and the guys were looking at my feet, my feet were all red. And they're like, what's here? I'm like, Oh, you know, like I always just sit in the eyelets and they're like, why? And I'm like, well, that's normal. And they're yeah. like, no, no, it's not. And I was like, Oh, and then it was just, from there, I thought maybe I was only the one having that issue, and it turns out that it was a pretty big issue that we needed to solve for, and that's you why go. you the weren't the problem. I wasn't the problem. Who, yeah. who would have thought? Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Um, now, I think so. Part of the part of the 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 
the design or the, the, the thinking behind coming out with a new product is that you need to change something, you need to improve something, you, you need to take something to the next level. But when I think of, when I think of catchers, and especially when I think of uh, 2X, I think of how much better it was than a lot of the stuff that had come out. Right. So how do you design something new, but with, you know, without having to change a lot because, uh, because I think that glove was quite good. Yeah. There, there's a healthy balance, right? Like it's, how do we make sure if it ain't broke, don't fix, mm-hmm. but then also let's not get lazy and just do the same thing year over year. Right. We've seen that fail before in our past as well. Like we mm-hmm. come out with a new glove and we're like, well, that's it. And then all of a sudden two years in, someone's like, this isn't it. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, um, that's so there's a healthy there's a healthy balance. So for us, it was just let, let's just improve upon the things that like let's go look for the negative feedback. It wasn't let's just go talk to goalies and let's hear how great it is. Let's hear about what they're not liking. If, mm-hmm. it, if it's the T trap, if it, like, a lot of feedback that, that it, uh, goalies wanted to move to double T as a stock or better materials in the palm because our game ready even though out of the box sometimes gets a little bit soft over time. So it was just about improving materials and just getting better from on top of the two X pro, but it was listening to the feedback of didn't love this, didn't love this. Let's, mm-hmm. And then we just were taking the most popular and trying to focus on it. Yeah. So we've got curve composite. We've got pour on XRD. Uh, yeah, new, both. New do- yeah. New double T trap um, curve composites kind of been the one that kind of sets us apart. Just knowing that we have that stability, it, it takes the weight out of the glove, but then also doesn't sacrifice durability. So, mm-hmm. yeah, for, for us, it was th- those are the main things using our technology to our advantage. That's something that we can set ourselves apart from our competition is yeah. using technologies like that, that you don't see some of the other smaller brands do. So we want to make sure that we're that we're capitalizing on using what the player guys have brought over and being able to use them in, in, in the correct ways. Yeah, and and, and just n- not just thinking that it's uh, that it's a skate material. Yeah, you know, it, exactly. it's it's well, now. I mean, even now, it's throughout the entire catalog has curve composite in it. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Like and, elbow and pads, funny. shoulder pads. Yeah, it, it's funny you say that too because I remember I sat down with a pro a couple summers ago and I was explaining that there's curve composite in the catcher and he was like what do you mean curve composite? I'm like, well, it's like your skates. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, and I explained like, you know, your skate material doesn't come molded. Like it comes in a flat sheet. And he's like, oh, and it was like, yeah, we just take that. We layer it a little differently, but it's the same curve composite that you have in your skate. Mm-hmm. He's like, mm-hmm. well, that's cool. I'm like, well, yeah, that, that, and he, he just seeing it differently. But it's funny when, when you don't have the exact like knowledge being handed to you, sometimes it's hard to describe, but also too, there's been other brands in the past that have said that they have, composite in their things but there's this much so right right it really just about using it the right way yeah i I think and the one thing you did mention about about goalies uh, the the move towards double t with just about everybody that is an enormous looking pocket uh on that glove me personally i'm a single t guy forever i i love single t's i'm a single t skate lace uh guy um but that when i first saw the glove the one thing i noticed about it right away was that like this this pocket looks enormous yeah and it, it just it widens it out you get a big basket um so the so the pucks just I, i'm guessing the pucks are just gonna go right in so um yeah it, it was one of the areas that we just looked at like it was the give and take do we need to do it we've mm-hmm. always been a single team vapor double team supreme so i was like do we yep. need to do it and as when we started pulling the data from custom and the feedback at the store level, yeah. it was just like kids were like, yeah, no, no, double T is definitely the way to go. And then we started lacing them differently, came up with a new bit of a new geometry. And it was all of a sudden you look at it and you're like, this thing is huge. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it doesn't look fair, really. It looks. Yeah. <laughs> you know? We'll take any advantage we can get. Well, that's part of being a goalie, right? If you ain't cheating, yeah, you ain't exactly. trying. Exactly. And just don't tell the refs and uh, we'll all, we'll all be okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, the, the, forgotten member of the glove family of course is the blocker but we should touch on we should touch on that a little bit one thing i saw that was interesting that uh people might not quite have an appreciation for is the 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 uh, player glove um 
yeah the palm size geometry basically like what what you've what you've done there yeah um do you want to do you want to just kind of go into that a little bit to yeah i i think i enjoyed this story a little bit more than most people do just because okay. i was in the i was in the room um but it, i remember we 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 were sitting in the development room and when when product comes across the table and it was like hey we're working on the new well at the time it was the ultrasonic and it was like how do we get better with player dimension? Like, sorry, how do we get a better blocker pump? We were just screwing around materials, layering. And I remember just kind of saying, I was like, why do we, why do we, it's like the skate fit. It's like, why are we okay with so much extra material? It's like, well, that's just the way that it's been. And we started screwing around with different, different gloves. And then I remember we walked down the hall, we went into the player protective room, grabbed a glove and I said, well, they don't have that. And they went, oh yeah, we just looked at it a little differently. And it was just something that we did. It was just one thing that kind of led to another that it was like, we tried out different dimensions. Is it 14? Is it a little bit bigger? Cause it is end up technically being like a 14.5 where player always lives in the 14 range. So mm -hmm. honestly, it was, it was just about thinking about it differently, but it was, it was put it, it was just all of a sudden one day it was like a light bulb hit that we were just like, why, why do we have so much material in the palm? This doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know sometimes even you, d you will put on a, gl a glove and you do feel that thickness and sometimes even just grabbing a stick, you almost, you almost don't feel uh, connected. Yeah. You know? And then it becomes a little slippery. You might as well not even have grip on your stick. It's, and that's why you see a lot of goalies tape their sticks so aggressively is just to make mm -hmm. sure that they can feel that through that palm. And yeah, as much as we don't say that there is, there is a break in time period with a blocker whether it's right. the backhand pad or just softening up that palm a little bit, there's definitely a break in with all product. And that's one that gets overlooked with goalies for sure. Yeah. 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 Um, so actually something I, I thought of just as you were explaining a bit on, on that, on, on developing the palm. So um, you said basically like you're in the development, you're in the, you know, you're with uh, the team, so to speak. Yep. Um, what's that like when you are developing a product? I mean, obviously, um, maybe to the end user, it may just seem like, oh, we have to make a new one and, you know, kind of out it comes. But um, what's that like um, with the team? Um, and, you know, where do the ideas come from and where do they go from there? And then how do they become the final product? Yeah. So historically, what we do is we basically we we submit a brief um, early early on. So call it 18 months or so before launch, maybe okay. a little bit before. Um, but up until then, it's up to the category manager to basically figure out what's wrong. Okay. Or right. right. So not to be always negative, but just to figure out what's working and what's not working. So mm -hmm. what do we need to solve for? And and what's the, and what also, what are we launching this year? Is it because we, we do different cadences, right? We have masks some years um, and then others not. And then sometimes we do, is, and then if it's a vapor year or a supreme year. So that's been pretty well. That's pretty well. The main thing is that focusing on what are we missing and, and what do we need to do? And then that's right around that 18 month mark or so, maybe right around there, let's call it. And then the biggest thing is just trying to figure out what we're looking for. But then also it's talking with our team in Blaineville of what have they been working on? They mm -hmm. might bring us something that it's way out. They're all engineers and product developers sure. much, much smarter than, than we are. So it's, yeah. they may have a new material or a new, a new technology, like the knee. Mark, Mark and myself didn't think of the knee and Mark is Mark Geniak is the senior brand just for yeah. everyone that he's Jiggy. the senior brand manager. Jiggy, he's the senior brand manager for goalie. And we didn't think of the knee that was brought to us from our developers, much as we want to take credit for it. That was brought to us that we said, Hey, Supreme is this blocking style, st like stable coverage pad. Mm -hmm. Here's something we've thought of and think of for the pad. And then we were like, Oh my God, like this is perfect. And then that's a problem. To, that's a, that's a solve for a problem. We didn't really know how to solve for over and yeah. under rotation. Yeah. So, I wasn't even thinking about this, but now that we've done it, like, Holy cow. Well, you know, there's the story a, for yeah. us. It was more durable <clears throat> skin. That was our brief for 2020 was let's get, let's get, keep getting more durable. And let's look at, maybe we look at a below the knee strap and we were just looking at certain things like that. They bring a stability slide and we're like, well, now we're geniuses. <laughs> yeah, they're going to love this. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a, it's a pretty cool and fun process, but yeah. it also is a very tough process. Cause when you get to a point where either you're solving a big problem or 
you don't really have a, but it's like the, it's like a hyper light catcher. There wasn't a ton of things to change there. And it's also the, we're also meeting with our pro team. That's something I think we've like, we've done really well on goalie is that we've involved our pro guys like from day one. And, and that's our pro reps, even goalies. And it, they really do live by a world of if it ain't broke, don't fix. So it's yeah, that just, just, medium, just right? give me last year's, just give me last year's, just give me exactly. Last year's. And that, right. And then it, it, you run into that. They don't know that it's better. It's like, you see goalies <laughs> in the NHL using NXG sticks. Oh, I don't yeah. want to switch. I don't want to switch. I don't want to switch. And then all of a sudden you hand them a one ass or you hand them a hyperlight and they go, this thing's unbelievable. And you go, yeah. Well, yeah. What, what, is this new this year? Like, no, about three years ago. <laughs> yeah. So this is the one I tried to get you to use. Yeah, exactly. Uh, th- so. Those guys sometimes are a bit funny that way, but you know, you, you don't want to change anything when, you know, when, when you've got a contract coming up and you're worried of one goal makes you a one nine, nine or a two Oh one, you know, you go from a nine Oh nine to a nine eleven. Like that's big. You well, know? And, and, it, and it's funny too, right. For us, average goalies, yeah. getting a new stick is really not that big of a deal. It's kind of fun. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. And for us, that's a low, that's a, that's a, a low capacity change in the sense of like you get it and you're like, right. this is whatever new stick. Cool. Light. It's lightweight. It's probably lighter than last year. So this is cool. Giving a lighter stick to a guy who's lived his entire, played his entire life, plays a certain way, one way. Like that's, that was like Lundqvist. That was yeah. the battle of getting him out of wood sticks. Forget foam core. Yeah. Just, wood just the woodies. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's sort of an interesting piece of it when you can take a look at all those things and, and uh, you know, we're rushing to, to, to bring something to market and we're excited. I'm excited for product launches and I want everybody to get their hands on it. And I want to be able to tell the world what everything is going to be. And then you look at the guys who are the sort of the ones that it's really made for or based on, or however you want to uh, call it. Um, and like, they almost could be less interested in. Oh yeah. In well, and it is. depends on the guy, right? Like, of, of course, of course. Some, there are, some there are, are like guys dialed too. and they, they want new, they want to see new, like Basileski, he he's not a big change guy, but always wants to see it and always wants to be involved and have a conversation about it. Changing into the hyperlight chest and arm. Like he's always interested mm-hmm. and wants to see something new. Mm-hmm. Um, but that being said, right. Like we've always said, like, not always, in the last two or three years, we started saying like our key consumer is that high end 16, 17 year old for the elite level product, because those okay. are the kids that are willing to change. They're excited about something new. They care what the NHL uses, but they're not married to it. And right. that we've noticed that those high end call it 16, 17, 18 year olds are where that money like kid is for that high end product. Cause as you know, that you fit yep. the kid, they come in and like, I Absolutely. want the new, I want the new hyperlight. Like, yeah, a lot of time well, they already have in mind what they want to try on. Yeah, I'm lucky that I have the relationship that I have uh, at Just Hockey with most of my customers is that they'll come in and they'll give me an idea what they want, but usually they are going to um, listen to what I have to say or they want yeah, my recommendation. Sure. So that works really well. But but yeah, you're right though. They They do come in a lot of times sort of already with an idea or certainly – the thing that they're looking for, you know, and then it's just a matter of making sure it works and making sure they're in the right fit and, and, and all yeah. those things. We, we've done a, like what's back to kind of consumer insight and research of like that. We actually did a bunch of research on homework. Like how much homework is a kid, is a kid doing? And it's like triple for goalies versus players. Okay. Or like uh, when, probably not surprised. Yeah, it would, but it was very cool to see that, like, where, mm-hmm. like, I thought once again, maybe it's a me thing. Yeah. I learned, I went in, I'm learning product. I like studied it. I, when I walked in the store, I was probably a goalie guy's worst nightmare and best friend because I was like, I'm taking that. He's like, well, I'm like, no, no, that. <laughs> That's where the no different now. It's when a kid shows up to a demo day and we're standing there with all the gear and he's like, I need a medium and I want this. And do you have a pro palm? You're like, well, you won't, you don't really need a pro palm. No, no, you don't have any pro palms to try. And it's like, no, like, it's, it's funny how yeah, they come in I'll go and out there with my mittens. Exactly. They know exactly what they want. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, yeah. That's it's again, not surprising, not surprising sometimes um, that that's what the research showed given, uh, oh, yeah. given obviously, you know, our, our experiences. 
Um, so, okay. So you were that kid growing up who was really into the gear. You were Big you know, into figuring out your specs. Um, like where'd you grow up? Where'd you play? So I grew up in Peterborough. Okay. Um, and then kind of played, played all my hockey in Peterborough, played a little bit of junior, a little bit of junior C. Uh, but yeah, I was always gear obsessed Was a goalie world reader. Then mm-hmm. like had like saw the Don Simmons ads had to go to Don Simmons um but yeah no I was definitely a big time goalie gear nerd and like and it's funny too like growing up like I never thought like my passion and stuff like that would turn into like what it has in me working in the industry I've been with Bauer for 11 years now and it's sure yeah and it's funny just like that passion is actually what got me hired because I worked at um I worked at Dukes in Toronto and yep. then I got no I got noticed there went for a job at Bauer started at grassroots marketing but like that job was strictly based. Like I got hired basically because I had product knowledge and it was like, I kind of got lucky that I had the background from working at a store and kind of all led to it. One led to another. So it's been yeah, pretty cool. But yeah, I'm, I am a, I am a gear nerd through and through. That is a, that's an understatement. Well, certainly. I mean, that's always kind of been my impression. I know, I mean, you know, we can, count the hours probably that we spent talking about different things. And, and even when it comes to gear, not even current things, not even sometimes not even power things, you know, like it's just, um, there's just always something where you go, Hey, remember that, you know? So, Oh yeah. Yeah. We're definitely, uh, we're cut from the same cloth in that regard. That's for oh, sure. Perfect. Uh, you mentioned Vasilevsky. One thing you, you did say about him was, uh, was getting into the new arm and body. So we've got what looks like, what looks like a much squarer body uh, this time around. I don't know if that's, if that's to wrap it a little more or a little better or. Yeah. um, The biggest thing there was just matching mobility with a little more coverage. Guys were saying that with the shoulder adjustment we had on two X pro is that as it broke in, it kind of started to sink a little bit. Okay. So guys felt a little bit small. So it was just about making the the two X pro look bigger. Mm-hmm. And we kind of found a happy medium with the Hyperlite and we kept the, the two X pro arms um, beefed up the protection. Cause some of the feedback was that it, it got a little soft as well. Goalies felt that they got some stingers in the biceps and forearms. And that that's typical kind of year over year improvement Yeah, that we come out with something kind of new and exciting. And then as protection always with chest and arms always seems like, there is no tank. There is no perfect tank out there. It's yeah. always, can you tweak this a little bit more, it's a hard. little here? So they are shooting the puck right at us. <laughs> you know, it's funny that, uh, you know, and again, you, 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 you hear it from the customers in the store. There's obviously various uh, chat groups and uh, the message boards and things like that, where you see a lot of talk and, Oh, I wear this. And then the arms, I always get stingers or this one, I wear this. And it's like, I, and I, I can't help but think like, I don't think I've ever been hit with a puck where I immediately wanted to blame the manufacturer. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you have to have a pretty beat up chest and arm that like you get hit and then you're like, Oh, this stupid thing. Yeah. It's like, but it happens, get- I guess, I guess it happens to some. Sure. Oh, for sure. But, and it's funny too, right? Like it's, it's almost like some goalies are almost afraid to give a compliment to a chest and arm that you're like, Oh, you have this chest and arm. Like, Could what be. do you think? And they're like, it's fine. The arms are a little soft. Yeah. Like, well, do you like it? Oh yeah. No, no, I would never change. <laughs> yeah. Like, Oh, okay. No, I just can't get used to anything else. Exactly. Like yeah. I, I'll never change. And like, I feel like that's always such a, like, I feel like that's such a, like a bro stigma like that. It once they, once people found out NHL goalies didn't switch, Goalies completely yeah. felt okay with just never changing chest and arms, even if they come out black and blue. Yeah. And it's a six year old chest and arm, and they're playing major midget triple A and they're in an intermediate chest and arm. They're like, oh, that's all I know. Yeah. No, I remember seeing an interview with Ed Belfour and he had his jersey off. And this is, you know, when he came to the Leafs was probably, oh, I don't know when it was. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah, around right there. Oh, three, Oh four. Cause it was, it was, uh, and then, but you're looking at the chest protector. He's wearing from like 2000. Oh, it's yeah. like, why would you still be? Well, I guess you're wearing it for a reason. So, yeah. Um, so, so the, the impression I got right away, you know, back to the hyperlight of it, of course um, the one impression I did get from it was that this does look bigger. Like it looks fuller. And, yeah. that, and, and I think that'll be, 
that'll be something people do re- do really enjoy about it is that it's it's sort of got that amount to it. You, you guys, I think, have done a, a really good job of balancing, I guess, what we'd categorize as the new new sizing of things, and yeah. and but still kind of maximizing that coverage. Not and and I mean almost just body coverage rather than you know net yeah. coverage. I think just making sure that we've we've got all of our areas covered. You know that's that it I mean it can't be easy comparatively to what we've to what we've had before but like I said I think without it looking like uh it's been shrunk down it it certainly still looks like it's substantial and, and got great coverage so yeah and we changed shoulder floater shape a hair biggest thing was the adjustability on the shoulder but but yeah no and, and seeing the adoption we've gotten like when you in your hand off and like we said like it just an arm is a hard tough piece just because guys want Mm -hmm. these they want it to feel game ready we we've been sampling a lot of guys at the ohl and chl level of just like hey here's a stock unit and we have guys moving right into it being like this is the best chest i've ever had which is like that's unheard of that's not that i'm obviously i'm I'm tooting our own horn a little bit but that's just because like that's never happened to us before like that's from one at one s is probably our best unit globally still our most popular unit because we still yeah. offer that unit at custom at retail and at pro that's for sure I'm a, i think hyperlight will overtake that in a year i think by the looks of it certainly it's got a lot there's a lot of interesting features on it so yeah 100%. i definitely wouldn't rule that out i i, I do remember how the the one s did uh, how that kind of came on and it was quick it was almost right away guys came in and guys would try it on and they, and, and that would be, they'd have that moment where they exactly. would, uh, where they would really just go for it, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I certainly wouldn't rule it out. You guys have pulled it off before. So uh, let's hope for some, let's hope for some good success with this. Yeah. One. So, you know, I think it's trending in the right way for sure. Yeah. Does, is that, is that kind of a tricky thing though? I mean, going back to what you said a little bit before where y- you almost start off almost 18 months out, before a product launches. So if everything runs, you know, I mean, for those who don't keep track of these things, I mean, gear lines generally run in a 24 month turnover rate. So you've got a six month honeymoon stage. And then, you know, like the comedians say, when they're done shooting their comedy special, they got to go kill their babies after (laughs) you know, after that, and they're done, they're never going to tell that joke again. So you, you've got six months to, to really sort of, I don't know, I guess, bask in the, yeah. in, well, in the yeah, moment. It's basically like launch till like September is like, yeah, we're the best. You barely this get the, the start of a, you barely get the start of a hockey season with a new line before you're already thinking about the next one. For sure. I, and it's funny too. You'd think the more presentations you do, the easier they'd come. Right. But I, by the time launch hit, I had probably already presented Hyperlite like a hundred and some odd times, whether it was Bauer, pre- like online presentations, Bauer University, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. The toughest presentations to do by far are right around launch because you've already started the other year's life cycle and you've already started presenting that internally. Mm-hmm. So then you've already got... But then like, but then if you have something that like that is maybe like it, not an oopsie, but like something that isn't perfect on the, but you know, you're already fixing it for the next year. Like it's, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's where like, you've already started. It's to gotta be hard. Oh, it's very tough. Like I uh, presenting 2020 Supreme while we were in the development process of 2021 vapor was very hard. Like it was yeah. like all of a sudden, like I'm presenting. Like there was a, like I admittedly, I was on a podcast that I had to ask them to take it out because we hadn't talked about Hyperlight yet. Okay. And I said Hyperlight. I was like, oh, well, the, you know, with us working on new Hyperlight, no one had heard that name. No <laughs> one even knew it. And I, and I stopped. So and they had I to put the, like the bicycle this. horn in there over and top like, of I it. I would never normally do this. And I was like, hey, I need us to stop and edit or we just need to go back. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, no one could know that I just said Hyperlight. Like right. I'll get fired if that happens. <laughs> Oh boy. Just looking for no, trouble. Exactly. Looking for trouble. Yeah. Um, well, let's move to, let's move to sticks. Uh, so new, new hyper light stick coming out. I've always been a 
supreme guy for your sticks. And I think for good reason. I mean, I don't think there's, I don't think you guys make a bad stick either way, but uh, convince me what's going to switch me into uh, out of the supreme and into the vapor this year. Yeah. So the biggest thing is that we've kind of changed our stance uh, when it comes to, and that's actually, there's no pun there, um, but we changed our stance basically. Stance. <laughs> exactly. We basically changed the way we positioned the, the stick in the sense okay. that normally Supreme is our highest price point. Yep. And that's probably why you like it. And that's why a lot of goalies have always gravitated towards Supreme is because we've always elevated it above vapor. So okay. whether you get your, you always had your top end Supreme and then we've always had one tier lower with like the two X pro Yeah, little lower price point, but that also comes with a little less technology, a little less wow factor sure. looking at booking, like uh, the way that basically stores are buying it or the way that it's been selling mm-hmm. Supreme was killing vapor like crushing it. And we were just like, yep. And we were like, we need to balance that out. So what we did was we basically brought vapor up to match ultrasonic from a, from a, uh, from a technology standpoint. And that's what hyperlight is. So hyperlight is our lightest stick ever. So it comes in at 595 grams. So it's our first and technically on paper, the first ever sub 600 goal stick. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's a tech stream build, where normally vapor only had a tech stream blade. Um, it's a full tech stream build on the paddle and the blade. We're utilizing a technology that we have in Supreme called ACL, which is advanced carbon layering mm-hmm. that just allows us to use less material and actually get more durable, which is pretty, pretty cool. And then, um, and then on the new vapor, we have a new pentagram. So I don't want to go off camera, but I have, It's great audio, by the way. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I knew the second I had to reach for it. That so, sound you hear is people tuning out. Yes, that's just everybody logging off. <laughs> um, so we have, we have new pentagrip. So pentagrip is basically a geometry that's on the face side of the shaft. Okay. And the reason for that is basically a raised ridge. Because if you close your hand, mm-hmm. your hand's not a circle. It has right. a point at the top. So what we were thinking was that the way we can get it to fit better into the hand is to have that, let me just move, but like just to have that fit into the hand better, Mm -hmm. just to give the goalie better overall control. So that was the biggest focus here was just having better control. And then obviously a much lighter weight stick. Yeah. Very good. I can't wait this year. I mean, obviously we didn't have a hockey show. It was difficult to get out to see things. Yeah. Um, you know, even for a lot of us, depending on geographically where you were, have been have been shut down or to to some degree have been shut down. So obviously the opportunity for even guys like me to see stuff ahead of time has been uh, very difficult. So seeing things like that, that'll, you know, I, I, like I said, I, I can't wait to really to have my hands on all of it because yeah, I got to get out there. I got to start, uh, I got to start uh, servicing these kids soon. So no, exactly. It's, it's going to be a, it's probably going to be a bit of a strange year uh, just in that. I don't want to say out of practice. I mean, I've been fitting skates and goalie pads and everything for, we're talking 20 years now. So it's, it's the formula is there. Yeah. It's just how it works with each new, with each new uh, product that comes along. So, well, but it's going to be, curious. it's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. And I'm just, I'm just, what I'm really wondering about is, uh, is what the mad rush is of, of, people who haven't bought gear between that's, yesterday and almost two years ago, considering uh, the buying cycle. That's so weird. I was literally just to say that was, mm-hmm. I'd be curious. I, we live in an Ontario bubble just for yep. everyone listening. We're both yep, in yep. Ontario. So we, I, to me, I feel like the world has stopped where you talk to my friends in the U S everything's normal there. I had a buddy who played in a hockey tournament this weekend. So yep. At West is opening. So as of July 1st, Alberta. So I think we're going to feel a little more, a little bit more normality here coming soon. But for me, it's what does that do to custom sales? Because there's going to be so much hurry up offense, but is yeah. that an Ontario only thing? I know Quebec has been similar. Yeah, so like, that'll be, it, it's that give and take, right? Where like, or have some, have people just ordered so far in advance because they know that they can wait. They can say like, Hey, you know what? I have the time. I'm not on the ice. And I'd be curious because we obviously with everything in our industry right now and the way that the world is worked, like our lead times, we've tried to focus big time on just keeping our lead times that they're always going to be right around that eight to 10 week lead time. We're not going to mm-hmm. stray from that. We're, 
But then you hear from other brands that have other constraints because of everything going on globally, like they're, they're much higher. So it's, yeah. it'll be a, it's going to be a very weird year for sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, I would say to, to most customers out there, you know, all white is not a bad color. No, like, you know, it'll be okay. That might be 90% of what you're able to get this year. So you, 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 you know, Archer's Herbe was a fine goalie, you know, uh, <laughs> Him and Peter Scudra, all the Latvians. All white goalie. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so maybe not uh, specifically to a piece of equipment or a particular uh, page of the catalog, let's say. Um, making gear for the smallest goalies out there. So your Prodigy line, this is a line yeah. that's had various iterations over the past little while. Most of the time that you've been there, basically. Um, how do you go about making the right stuff for the right size kid, um, and, and, and do that effectively? Yeah. You know what? I, f I feel like the, the prodigy side of things has changed a lot. I feel like when we first started doing prodigy and we came out with it for the first time, it was like, we were met with hugs and kisses and you guys are doing great. It's amazing. And then all of a sudden it was like a two year switch and it was like, your stuff's kind of like a toy. Yeah. It's, it's, and then yeah. it was like nothing's changed. And they went, well, no, everything's changed. It was like, everyone kind of took what we had been doing and then made it a little bit better, a little bit. And then it's just kind of been on us to make sure. So the biggest thing for us that we've been just trying to focus on is spec obviously is a big one, whether that's flex or strapping, but the biggest thing for us is right sizing. So it's the mm -hmm. right size glove, right size blocker, pad width. What's too narrow. What's, what's too wide. It's, just finding that happy medium. And I we've come a long way with our chest and arm because our chest and arm before was like a padded bib. It might as well have been a back catcher's bib. Mm -hmm. It was, it, there was really, it didn't fit great. The, the actual adjustment was brutal, like was brutal for kids. We just said, you know what, screw it. Let's make a scaled down real chest and arm. Yeah. And let's just see how that does. And we think that the new prodigy ones way better. Uh, but yeah, I think the biggest thing for us is sizing. It's just getting it on a kid that when he puts it on, He's already going to be awkward. So yeah. how do you make it less awkward? Yeah. Him, as, right? as, so. as, as little awkwardness as we can, as we can do. I, I, I do, I, I, I would say that the, the most recent, you know, iteration of, of prodigy, the chest yep. protector in particular, I, I would, I would say that um, is something that you can put on a kid right away and they can get, you know, success with it. So that was always, that was always the one, um, you know, the pants, like you try to make a pant that's really, really nice and small, but then you go, oh, wait a minute. I think we, I think we made these too small. Well, so then you try to make the pant. Yeah. You try to make the pant a little bit bigger, but I, 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 you don't also don't want it to run right up against the junior because, yeah. because then you're, now you're getting too big. So, but I think, I think like you're saying, like over the years uh, that you've been doing it, the the line itself has gotten more and more um, functional, let's say, like yeah. um, functional, functional sizing, you know, functional weight, you know, functional protection and, and all of that. So, yeah, that's... like I said, it, there was a, it just all of a sudden it was like a like a like a like a like a switch just flipped. It was mm -hmm. we we had our very original first run of prodigy that had the one, two, three step system. And everyone's like, this yep. is amazing. This is so great for kids. And like I said, overnight, it was all of a sudden it was crappy. It's a toy. Why does it come in a box? Like, what do you guys do? And it was just like, okay, we got to try and keep up. So now, mm -hmm. and then it was just about changing and evolving that to make sure that when mom and dad, and then also pricing, pricing is a big one. We had a, we had like a $119 composite prodigy goalie stick. Yeah. That, that's like as much as like half the equipment. So yeah. it was just about that balance. And we knew that we couldn't go back to wood. That That's mm -hmm. not a solution either. Cause as yeah. that goalie, uh, that, as that goalie develops, he's not going to start in wood, then go to composite. You got to make sure that he has what he, what he's going to develop into. Well now more than others. And this is, this is stuff I've touched on in the previous episodes uh, with some of your contemporaries is that I think the window on the wooden goalie stick or the foam core goalie stick is really starting to close where you've got enough of an offering at the smaller sizes, the younger age groups that kids, some of these kids now are coming through 
and they've never even used a wood stick. So oh, no. it's just, it's just progressing. It's, it's pushing itself out the door basically. Yeah. And, it, and it's funny too, right? There's this big, I don't know what happens, but there is this weird thing. And it, I think it's more goalies our age, maybe a little bit younger, but like they run into that. They pick up a low level composite and they go, this thing's so heavy. Like, Oh, cause your wood sticks were so light. That's like, right. Yes. And they're like, Oh no, my phone cords were really light. And like, they, I bet you they weren't. It's like picking yeah. up an original synergy. Yes. Like if yes. you if you right now found exactly if you <laughs> found like a, if you you found a synergy or a triflex and you pick that thing up right now you'd be like this thing's a piece of garbage. Like yeah. well at the time that was yeah. the re- that was a revolution. Three hundred dollars stick. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Um, one one other thing too is that that you guys have done in the last uh, little while is increase the number of sizes in sticks uh, at the junior at the junior level. You used to have yep. the teeny tiny peewee, which was like yep. an eighteen. Then you'd have a twenty one, and then you'd have well twenty three and a half, twenty fours is kind of where they rested after that. But yep. then suddenly, just because you're an adult, you also get a 25 and a 26 and a 27. But for some yeah. reason, kids who are growing nonstop get no sizes. Yeah, that was um, that was because of the death threats we were getting from goalie coaches. <laughs> yeah. Goalie coaches were ready to murder us because they were trying to do a good job and they were trying yeah. to help us out and say like, "Hey, get a bower." But it was like, "Okay, yeah, he's he's in a 21 right now. 23 is a little too big." Like, okay, we'll go get him a 22. And they're like, well, Bauer doesn't do that. Wish we could. I guess we'll go to CCM now. We'll go to we'll go to Warrior. And it was just, we were just thinking we were just kind of hitting the curve. We just mm-hmm. weren't. It I just mean, wasn't I, working. I, I, and nobody else really had them either. So right. But the know. tough part was when someone did have the one, yes. they might not have had a 23, but they had a 22. Yeah. So it was like that give or take. But then finally it was just when we revamped the whole line right from GSX. Uh, and then right through all the way up to ultrasonic, we just said no more gaps. Let's just yeah. hit them all 23, 24, 22. Like, let's just get them all. And let's just make sure we have, we're like, it, it just makes sense. And that's, let, that's and we, exactly and you don't it. need a, you don't need a high end youth. Like that's not well, what we need to do. Play is a little different. Good. Yeah. It needs to be light enough. Durable. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think yeah. anyone's trying to, um, you know, hit the crossbar from the other end. Yeah, exactly. That's seven. I mean, maybe they are. Who knows? I mean, well, sign that kid up then. You know I was just I mean? going to say, let's get him more sticks. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, I, I think we've run through it all. So what else, what else, um, what else did I, what didn't I ask you about? Like, what, what else are you excited about or, or what's something that's, that's coming down the line? Maybe that, uh, that you want to, uh, you want everybody to know at least a little bit about. Yeah. I think biggest thing is just, <clears throat> excuse me, is like, I'm just excited for like the way the skates are going to go. Mm-hmm. Um, that's going to have a full color program. Um, I think something that we've dialed in is pretty well all product custom is that, that we've come a yep. long way. Um, we used to be the 19, 20 week lead time, but didn't even know how to fix it. And now we've come a long way that we, we are streamlining all of our uh, custom pad block catch to be eight weeks eight to 10 weeks. And then that's, that includes uh digiprint. Okay. So like that, that really brings that down. So that, to me, like, that's so exciting. Like that's something that will set us apart from our competition. Cause that stays, we've had one full year that that has not strayed from eight, eight to nine weeks. Mm-hmm. So that's very exciting. Um, and then, like I said, for skates, for the new pro, we're going to have a new, a full color program. So you'll be able to get custom color name on the tongue, custom fitting from the scan, um, and then obviously uh, on, um, we have, we've had sticks on my bower for a couple of seasons now, but just better color offering more curves. P31 now has a round toe. I saw um, that. So we have shorter shaft, but in custom, if you don't want the shorter shaft, you can get regular shaft. So we, we I think it's just our custom options. I think that's the exciting, that's the fun part, right? That's the, yeah. the very cool part that we were lacking for a lot of years. We weren't a foam core company. Mm-hmm. So you couldn't really get 7,500s back in the day or reactors and custom. It was a bit of a pain, a pain in the ass, to be honest. And it was one of those things that as we started to get better at custom, that I think that that's where people started, have really started to feel that we're a goalie company. We're not just Bauer who also has goalie. Right. We're, we're starting to put the goalie kind of the needs and the cool wants, custom chest and arms, all that kind of first. Yeah. 
Yeah. Maybe let's, maybe let's talk a little more about Digiprint uh, yeah. because that might be something that does get lost somewhat on people is that uh, the capabilities that you have from a yeah. graphic standpoint, not being a cut and sew, but being a, a fully, uh, fully printed graphic. Yeah, absolutely. So that's kind of been one of our biggest separators from other brands is just having that patenting that and basically having it for our, basically for our, all of our goalies. And yeah, so it's not cut and sew. It's not a die cutting system. It is fully digitally printed. So the way it works is that um, you would work with a store. The store would pass along your idea. Uh, and then the idea basically comes to life via one of our designers. We have three designers on staff and you work one-on-one -on -one with the designer. And then you go back and forth, whether you want an old reactor graphic or you want your dog's face. Yeah. If you give us a high enough res image and that can translate and the way it works, you can basically drop anything in. Uh, basically the designers point and click and puts it on every single set goes through, uh, myself and brand just for approval, just to make sure that there's nothing that's patent infringement, nudity, sure. all that, all that fun oh. stuff. But it's, uh, that, that every single pad is vetted and looked over and just to make sure that it, it, it has the right approvals for it. Right. I'm still waiting on my, uh, Cooper legends, uh, did you print, uh, exactly. tracture, you know, it, uh, it's funny and how many it, it's actually pretty wild on how many goalies have started. I feel like there's been a rush. I don't know if it was because Casimir or Casasuo did his uh, which reactor came out four su super sharp. So one of my I, favorites, I, it's a fairly simple graphic. I don't know why, but I always go back to it. I really like that graphic. This, yeah, because it's straight and then it's angled, it comes back out towards the toe. It, it's it really it like it looks like it's in a stance already. Yeah, so the, the you know what, we've had a lot of like a lot of those lately, like in multiple mm -hmm. colors, like a goalie for university of Minnesota, he's going to be using it next year. And it looks like it looks unbelievable in those colors. So it's very cool. But then it's also, there's the other side of it. There's a, always funny. Like when all of a sudden you, you get kids like, Oh yeah, I just want the iceberg graphic. They're like, well, we can't really like, we yeah. can, we can screw with it a little bit or like we've, I'm a diehard through and through pot band fan. Sure. Why I'm a goalie how many kids have sent us a pop band graphic and it's just like, it kills me to say you yeah. can't do it. You just rather not. Man, it's, there's something there to not, to not just doing it, you know? Exactly. Like, there's just, it's just very tough. And it's also not fair to other brands. Like you look at what, what CCM has been able to do with Riddick and stuff like that. Like they own that. I, I, to be honest, I'd be, I wouldn't be very happy if all of a sudden someone hit the ice and it has another brand and he's got a reactor graphic on. So yeah, no fair completely. Absolutely. So, to me, it's it, it, there. There's endless possibilities on what you can do on your pad. So right. it, I think our, right. our our designers have been unbelievable. We have we have some of the best designers around. So it's been very cool to see what they have been able to do for for some of that. Yeah, it, it, exciting to see when they do. When you open a box and you do see something like that for one of your customers, you're like, oh, they nailed it. You know? Yeah. So well, it's and the, and the tough part is there was always there's growing pains too, right? Like mm -hmm. if everyone remembers the first couple of years, black was like gray. Yeah. Yeah. You, you store gold was <laughs> pea color. So I, it was well, like, I, I remember personally on a forum being somewhat critical of, I think it was, you? I don't know if it was Joseph's no. winter classic, uh, the something about the blue. It oh, just no, it looked was Anderson's. I what, have that what, oh, set. I have that okay. set in my, I'm not in this office at my office in like in the actual like office that we have in Miss Saga. I have yeah. that set. Yeah. And you're right. You know what it is? That was before we were using designers in the sense that, like a like a like a like an engineer designer that actually would do the actual artwork. Okay. This was like hand drawn, and we okay. were treating it like that would be cool. It'd be like a hand drawn reactor set. But he, what he did was he built in shading and stuff like that. But then when all of a sudden, when it gets yeah. out in the real world, you're like, you don't need that. That's what. Yeah, I think the colors grading that. in and out a bit is exactly. probably what so. kind of washed them a little. Oh, no, I, I know exactly. Yeah. I, like I said, I look at that set every day. It's in my office. So it's it's funny that you, because that is where if you notice that with the reactor sets now, they don't look hand drawn. Yeah, they look like they're a cut and sew tech pack like we would build our graphics today. No different than an ultrasonic graphic or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah even still, in spite of everything, it did look it did look pretty cool. So. Yeah. So, you know, and, and, and like you said, that was, that was like one of the first ones that anyone had ever really seen that you did. So, yeah, you know, uh, good on you guys for, for, for just for taking the risk anyway. And then certainly moving forward, I remember seeing some of the sample ones when the, when, when it was first talked about as a program, 
before yeah. it even got launched. And, you know, you guys are printing video game stuff on it and, and it just, uh, you know, it, it, it seemed like a whole different world, you know, from where it, from where it came from originally. Yeah. And one of the cool things too, it's kind of completely changed the way Euro does graphics. Cause now the team, right. we work with the teams and the teams just now they print their, lo- the, so you got to like get the, Zepter on there and stuff. Exactly. All the ads and everything like Skoda and all that kind of stuff. All that stuff is done now via Digiprint is that yeah. Digiprint, they do the graphic a little bit implementing the actual ad, like um, ads themselves. So it's, it's completely changed that it's no longer a sticker that affects the performance of the pad or anything like that, that almost all the goalies now there's no stickers anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's all cool stuff. I mean, it's, 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 it's great to, to, to just to kind of see where it's going. Um, yeah. I, I can't believe how much we've covered. It's uh, it's, it's, it's amazing to see one year after the next, you guys continually are coming out with some great stuff. It's really cool. Um, very fortunate that you were able to join me today. No, uh, thanks it. again for doing it. Absolutely. It's always great to talk to you anyway. I haven't seen you in quite a while. So I know even that was nice. So um, uh, again, uh, thanks very much for joining me and uh, can't wait to see all this new great stuff uh, uh, back in stores. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Okay. Take care, buddy. See ya. Thanks for watching. And a big thanks to Spencer and Bauer Hockey for helping make this happen. Please remember to like and subscribe, and we'll let you know when more content is available. Spencer, on a final note, you will be happy to know that you came well below your estimated 15 times saying stability. So hopefully everyone out there took the under. See you next time. Well, I tell you, I did, uh, I did expect a little, a little more uh, professionalism from you. <laughs> Running 11 minutes late, just uh, to okay. kick it all off. The one thing I just, I don't want to sound like a complete idiot when I do bring it up. Um, although this could happen anyway. Uh, okay. So for skates, Pro Elite GSX.